Without further ado, I will start with a short clip. Enjoy! So, did you hear the birds chirping? So, this sight and sounds are basically what I wake up to every day the past decade. Now, in case you are clueless where this location is, here is a short geography class. So, this is a map of Sabah. As you can see, there are five divisions. Number one is in the interior division, colored red. And number one is pink in purple. So the majority of population here are of the indigenous Murid people. If you Google further, it will give you an approximate distance from Kota Kinabalu International Airport to my school, which takes about four hours drive and a distance of about 250 kilometers. What you see here is the administrative block that also housed our preschool. Now next, you can see here is our classroom block. And here we have six classes only that totals to an amount of 198 pupils, including our preschoolers. The pupils who attend this school actually come from the six nearby villages that is within, the, within less than um, five kilometer radius from the school. Now here we have a glimpse of a common scene in a classroom. So because I am a science teacher, more often than not, we will have activities and experiment in a lesson. And science is a very hands-on lesson. So classes and my lessons can be very messy or even noisy. And this particular picture here, as you can see, discussions and presentation happening. But if you see here in particular, the picture at the bottom, this is not a science class, but also um, an interactive lesson for the subject of Rekabento Dan Technology, where the kids have to prepare and apply the manner for the manner of food preparation in their lesson. And then here in the middle bottom, you can see a group of preschoolers actually they are actually waiting for their turn to be called in a sports training but what they are doing they are actually playing with the Isora flowers trying to make themselves accessories interesting right so now 2020 is supposed to be no different if not better one of the things that i have planned was this little corner for science and just before the midterm holiday in March, I have done this much of work to create this one-stop info center for science at my school's open hall. This is new for us, the subject corner, and we were very excited to build our respective corners for different subjects. So what I show you here is actually only phase one. And I have plans to do more with this corner for the kids to use. So how has COVID affected me as a teacher? So as you can see here, all our plans went to trash. But since we are all safe at home, and these are the dilemma that we have. Okay, so we were given and we were ordered to do home-based learning or long-distance learning, they call it. Me, I have my gadgets. I have my internet connection. Remember I said I'm grateful for internet. This is why. I have 24 seven and very stable internet. The only thing I don't have was my books and my references. But then again, it all goes back to internet. Everything is online now. Now, meanwhile, for my kids back in the woods, it's a different story. Most household there are sharing one gadget and one gadget alone, which means the gadget belongs to their parents. So in case I haven't told you already, majority of my pupils are actually in the B40 category. Two, even though they're in school, we have a 4G connection or coverage. It is not very stable and also because it is due to unstable electricity. Yes, we have 24 hours electricity, but it is very unstable. So when power is out, most of the time, internet, internet is also out. So that's how it is over there. But 
the kids have their books, have their textbook, workbook, and activity book at home. So our question then was, how can we tackle and make this learning effective? So thankfully, we have WhatsApp and we have our PTA. If in case you don't know, it's Parents Teachers Association or in Malay PIBG, Persatuan Ibu Bapa dan Guru. Okay, so what did we do with this WhatsApp? So our PTA committee members have a WhatsApp group. So what we did was we reached out and eventually, and thankfully, we managed to get hold of many parents and create a WhatsApp group for each class. So for me, I teach five classes, so I was in five, and I am in five groups. So here is an example of what we did in the beginning. And this is the most that we can go to connect with our pupils again. And we decided to just not to stretch the amount of subjects to give out per day, simply because we know that the kids are sharing their phone. And some kids have three to four siblings who are studying. So thankfully, we do get responses. And even though it was not up to 100%, there were still positive responses from the parents and the kids as well. They do our work. They are very active in sending us pictures on how the kids are doing at home. So at the end of the day, we know our goal that is for the kids to at least do some reading, some writing while at home and are monitored by their parents. Now, here is another um, strategy that we applied besides uh, using WhatsApp. So we have our very own pigeonhole and thankfully we have a colleague who is staying there and are within the school area. So we could make use of this pigeonhole and because of that colleague as well, we were able to print our task and we, can, we could have the parents come and collect these worksheets from the school at a given time in a week. But then again, we thought it wasn't enough because at the end of the day, children are children. They need to play, they need to do something. Okay, and it cannot be just reading and just writing at home. So we need to make it interesting. Kids are always curious and kids also, we know children learn by doing. So that's where project-based learning come. So we incorporate project-based learning uh, as also encouraged by the ministry. We know for sure that the kids may not have the privilege to resources, but we know that they can still learn and do something with whatever they have. So here, as you can see in the slide, is a picture of a project for year six that was actually carried out um, just a month before the school in Sabah closes again because things got worse here. If you can see here, this pineapple gem is in layman's term, legit good. So next, how do we make sure or this is an example where the kids were able to learn independently on their own. Uh, for my year one kids who were actually testing and identifying objects that absorbs water. So all I did was just send in a guide picture and short GIFs on how to run this investigation. So actually for a year one and having to only have face-to-face -face interaction for only like uh, three months before, I am very proud and touched that they were able to do this with minimal guide from me. You can see here that they are able to record their findings. And this to me is a, an achievement for them. And this picture over here, this slide is my year two kids. And here they are doing um, rocket. Okay, so um, yeah, they are playing as well. And they are actually learning about the effect of wind. And here, next, and this one, I want to credit my colleague for this science class. And because he managed to get the kids to actually learn about their nature. So the topic was about plants and plants and nature is really very close to the kids because um, they are surrounded by the greens and most of their parents are farmers. And this particular video of the cornfield, if you see here, is actually taken by my student. 
And in this particular video here, he is presenting about the plant that he was uh, that is around him. So um, the kids were able to identify the plants they were uh, that is around them, and that yeah they learn to appreciate and learn more about the nature around them. Okay, so here is another example I wish to share. So this may not be a science class. But I'm trying to share that um, even though they do not have resources, but they still can make do with what they have. And they can turn it into beautiful arts like this. And these are all done by themselves. We don't have face-to-face -face interaction. There was no video. They only relied on their textbook. And um, yes, with their parents' help, and they were able to create um, arts like this. And these are year three. And here are more examples, as you can see, how um, creative the kids are um, with what they have to create and learn at the same time. So what can we take from this? Firstly, um, from this whole experience with home-based learning during this pandemic is that uh, we cannot deny the importance of digital literacy. And I speak from a community where I am serving where there is still literacy amongst youth and adults. No one wants to be left behind. So this issue of lack of access and facilities have also resonated more so during this pandemic. So even though we cannot go online 100%, there are activities that we let them do as long as the learning still go on at home. So this situation gives an opportunity for us teachers and also learners to be creative because growing up in that environment, around the forest, around the greens, um, some may not necessarily are aware of the science or even the nature around them. Therefore, uh, it is our duty as teachers, as educators, to inculcate this awareness and so that these students can appreciate and also do good things. So lastly, even though the digital demand is high today, especially with remote learning, there is still room for progress for both me as an educator and also the community, the students. So creativity has no limit. It can go both ways, offline and offline. So as an edu educator, I take this as a challenge and responsibility to expose and to expand my students' capacity to the most maximum possible. I want to believe that there is light to every tunnel. So there is hope. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you for the opportunity. Stay safe, everyone.